Well, the Arsenal manager, Arsene Wenger, was quite critical last week of the home support, particularly in the game here against Everton. But I tell you, it's going to be quite noisy here tonight because this is the fixture which means most to the locals around here. Arsenal and Spurs take the field. Arsenal led by William Gallas. I notice that Arsenal tonight have an all-French back four. And Tottenham are brought out by Jermaine Genus, who's done quite well in this fixture in recent times. Looking to see whether we can see Harry Redknapp coming out of the tunnel below us. But I'd just like to endorse, I think, and amplify what you, Mark Saggis, said at the start of the programme. And Lee come in as well on this. Uh, I, I haven't done my homework, and I'm not sure if this is going to happen again until the last day of the season. But it's great to have all these Premier League games, isn't it, being played simultaneously? It is, yeah. And a nice midweek fixture with everybody playing. Obviously, somebody played, uh, Newcastle played last night. but uh, and, a, and a match of the day midweek is always interesting. And there's some good games tonight as well, Mike. And, and no, no better one than this one in North London. We'll have words on this one before kick-off, but let's go to Fulham. Fulham Wigan, Nigel Adley. And Fulham have taken the lead. A first Fulham goal for Andy Johnson following his £10 million move from Everton. Paul Koncheski overlapping well down the left-hand side, crossing in low to the near post, flicked in by Johnson. He was possibly offside, but the goal was given, and Wigan trailed by a goal to nil. Andy Johnson will be returning to Everton. Saturday lunchtime, again you'll hear on Five Live. There's also been a goal, I think, in the Kilmarnock Celtic game. Brian McLaughlin. Yes, Mike, and it's come for champions Celtic. Sean Maloney, corner, swung in from the left-hand side. Scott McDonald peeled off his marker and glanced a header into the back of the net. Ten minutes gone, Kilmarnock nil, Celtic one. Thank you very much indeed, Brian. Let me give you the lineups here then at a frosty Emirates Stadium. Arsenal making three changes from the weekend. Sanya is fit again, will play it right back. Danielson's recovered from an injury, takes over from Song. And Adebayor, who I suppose was rested at the weekend, he returns for Bentley. They were never going to leave Adebayor out of this fixture. He's done particularly well against Spurs in the last couple of seasons. So the Arsenal lineup is Almunia, Sanya, Galas, Silvestre. There's no Colo Torre, he's on the bench, and Clichy. And cross midfield, Walcott, Fabregas, Danielson, and Nasri. And then Adebayor and Van Persie. The Tottenham lineup, and there are two changes. There's no Ledley King, but Jonathan Woodgate is back. Remember, Dawson is suspended, and Bale, after his suspension, takes over from O'Hara. And we imagine Bale will play on the left hand side of midfield because Asu Okoto retains his place. In this Tottenham lineup, Gomez, Hutton, Chorluka, Woodgate, Asu Okoto. Huddleston probably playing just in front of the back four, and Bentley, the former Arsenal player, Genus, Bale, Modric, and Pavlichenko. Referee is Martin Atkinson, and William Gallas steps forward to Jermaine Genus. So out, you've already outlined the Modric area, which could be a problem for for Arsenal lead tonight. Where where could be the problems for Spurs? Well, I think as you mentioned, um, with Bale playing on the left side, is it, his role is important. If, we, we know what Walcott's pace is like, and he loves to get at his fullback. He's got that confidence now that perhaps he didn't have a year ago. He's he, he's been playing well for for club and country, and to get at uh, at, at the fullback Asu Akoto, Bale's going to need to protect him in front of that in front of that uh, fullback, and I think that's a key area tonight. Well, Arsene Wenger has an incredible record against Tottenham. He's only lost two of 29, and he doesn't count the last one because he said it was only the Carling Cup when they lost 5-1 in the semi-final last year, which was probably one day Ramos's best night, really, apart from the final. But the last time that uh, Spurs managed to overcome Arsenal was in the last century, when Lee Dixon was playing for Arsenal. <laughs> right. That was a night. Do you remember that one when you had two players sent off? I do, yes. They lost 2-1. Yeah, I was in the middle of trying to separate all those players from fighting and doing all those silly things, and I think we had a couple of percent off. But, yeah, it's a big night for both teams for different reasons. You know, can, can the uh, Tottenham team go on from the weekend and, and maybe secure a point tonight, which will be a great result for uh, Harry Redknapp, and can this Arsenal side carry on in the form that we've seen in the last few weeks, which is exhilarating, they're attacking. But just watch them defensively well, because there's been a couple of weaknesses there of late. Away we go, really big night in the Premier League then, with Chelsea already a goal up, Fulham a goal up, Arsenal playing from left to right. Ironically, the last Spurs manager to beat Arsenal in the Premier League was, of all people, George Graham. Throw to Arsenal, near side. We're just getting a close-up of Harry Redknapp sitting down there with Kevin Bond, reunited. 
Woodgate just volleys the ball straight back out of play for an Arsenal throw. Woodgate and Choluka then together at the heart of the Spurs defence. Another throw to Arsenal near side. Sanya taking his time. Van Persie makes the run. Sanya with a looping throw looks for Van Persie. Up goes Woodgate. That's been headed away and it's going to be a Tottenham throw in right by the corner flag. So just to confirm that Gareth Bale is playing ahead of Asua Koto, the Cameroon player on this near side. Throw into Spurs. It's still inside the Spurs half. They've yet to cross the halfway line, Spurs. Bentley going in for his first touch. And then eventually Huddleston thumps it downfield. And that, well, almost a handball. It's only a handball by Gallas. It seems to love it. Almost. It was nearly yeah. two hands, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he was. The referee was just caught blindsided and he couldn't really see. Maybe looking for his linesman to give him a help out, but the flag stayed down. Well, he gloved it because he, <laughs> he's got the, the mittens on tonight, as has Sanya. That should be cold a club, club fine, by the way, wearing gloves in a game. I'm sorry, old-fashioned me. Uh, I don't think Pat Rice would have worn those. Anyway, <laughs> here come Spurs now, across the halfway line. Good running from Asua Koto. Just holds the play up and then uh, wastes the ball, gives it away to Arsenal. Walcott tried his first run and he's been blocked by Genus. And Arsenal have a free kick and it's a sort of stuttering start. It'll just take a while maybe to s sort itself out. Genus has got a big role to play with Huddleston in this middle of the park because we know what Danielson and Fabregas are like. As I said before, they're very attack-minded and also Van Persie likes to drop where he is now in that little hole in between the full-back, uh, sorry, the central midfield and the centre-backs. Long ball forward from Arsenal and I was just about to congratulate... Uh, Arsene Wenger on being a real he-man he's not wearing any protection tonight on this cold night he's just got his suit on but now somebody's brought him uh, some warm clothing as Spurs try to get free down that far side of the field it's a foul and Arsenal take the free kick quickly so the North London derby just underway here at the Emirates Stadium Chelsea already in front against Hull through Lampard and Fulham through Johnson lead Wigan by one goal to nil Fabregas tries to flick the ball onto Van Persie. Spurs win it in midfield. Huddleston looking for his best option inside the centre circle. Knocks it forward. Looks from the run from Gareth Bale. Bale in the area. Good running from Bale. Hits the side netting. There was nobody ready to give it to at the far post. And Bale in the end doesn't test Almunia and smacks the ball into the side netting. Ooh, the trouble with Bale there was he was too quick for all his teammates. He made a great run down the left and outpaced Sanya at the fullback position and a good ball from Huddleston inside the fullback and when he got to the byline to pull it back there was literally no Tottenham players in the box so he had to try a sort of a cross shot and he went behind for a goal kick but good run from Bale out comes Harry Redknapp for the first time with a few words here in the North London derby you're listening to Five Live it's Fabregas of Arsenal looking for Nasri cross comes the defensive cover Choluka and he lets the ball go behind for a goal kick Choluka and Modric both played here in what was the first European game in the Emirates for Dinamo Zagreb in the Champions League when Eduardo scored for Zagreb he now obviously of Arsenal and Tottenham will play Dinamo Zagreb next week in their UEFA Cup type White Hart Lane a good noise around the Emirates Stadium the Spurs fans joining in as well they're behind the goal occupied by Gomez as Arsenal failed to cut the ball out and Modric is running being forced to run square by Gallas on the edge of the penalty area and Gallas manages to dispossess Modric but Modric was dangerous for a few moments and now Walcott gets away from Genus but Walcott will not get past Woodgate he showed just too much of the ball to the centre-back but it was a thrilling run from Woodgate until it was ended by uh, by Walcott until it was ended by Woodgate and Arsenal have a throw in. two good pieces of uh, central defensive play there firstly from Gallas putting the cover on sniffing out the danger and blocking Modric and then at the other end Walcott on a run down the wing and uh, beat two players. And when you beat the fullback, what you want as a fullback when you're beaten like that is your centre half coming over and sweeping up for you. And it's exactly what Woodgate did. Lee Dixon with us, veteran of these occasions, obviously, with Arsenal. 0 0 at the Emirates. Gallas, the Arsenal captain, plays the ball in towards Van Persie, who turns short of the halfway line. Van Persie now with space into Adebayor. Adebayor's given it away, and it's Modric once more. Trying to go round Van Persie and brought down by Van Persie. Free kick is given to Spurs inside the centre circle. Let's just check again on Hull Chelsea. Early, early uh, activity there from John Murray. 20 minutes played, still Hull City nil, Chelsea won that brilliant finish from Frank Lampard after two and a half minutes of the match. Chelsea, unlike Sunday, 
have got lots of room on the flanks as they come forward. But I should say as well that, that Hull City have made it uncomfortable when they've had set pieces for Chelsea's first choice defence. However, Hull City nil, Chelsea won the score. Thank you, John. Remember, Fulham are leading 1-0 against Wigan through Andy Johnson. Throw to Arsenal, far side. This is their left in the first half. Clichy's throw to Adebayor. Better touch this time by Adebayor, but Clichy's given it away. And Tottenham play it forward. The trouble here, though, is Pavlichenko's all on his own. They need to support him. Bentley now, who will get a bit of abuse, I'm sure, from some of the home fans here. Bentley has to give it back to Huddleston. Spurs playing it neatly through midfield. Huddleston with his left foot, shoveled it forward. And it's headed away by Silvestre. Arsenal fans getting a view of Silvestre here in the Emirates Stadium, playing at centre-back. A smart signing by Arsene Wenger. Tottenham now, with the ball back inside their own half. It's hit long by Woodgate to the far side, looking for the Scottish international Hutton. Infield from him to Bentley. Bentley will do well to keep this in. He manages to turn and find Huddleston. This is decent play from Spurs. Now they bring it to this near side of the field. Tottenham building down the left. It's played forward with pace towards Pavlichenko. It's played forward with too much pace. Arsenal have it back again. And here's Conor McNamara at Old Trafford. Manchester United nil, West Ham nil. Nani on the attack at the moment. Puts in a left-footed volley that just goes a whisper past the post. It is wide. That's the second good chance United have created. Dimitar Berbatov missed a sitter a few minutes ago. Again, Nani involved in the build-up. When it came to Berbatov, he was edge of the six-yard box. He put it over the crossbar. Manchester United nil, West Ham nil. Thank you. And just in case you didn't hear at the start of the programme, no... Van der Sar and the United goal tonight and Rooney left out as well in that match against West Ham ball out of play far side and Arsenal have a throw and Arsenal uh, Spurs have started quite well here the, Hutton yes Lee they have started well and they've been patient I think Harry will say that you've got to be patient against this Arsenal side the thing is when they get the ball up to Pagliachenko if they, they support him too quickly with too many bodies and they lose it they get hit on the break, and that's where Arsenal are at their strength. A oh, good ball by Huddleston to Modric, and Modric tries a snapshot, but in the end, that's still in play. Hasn't even gone out for a goal kick to Arsenal. Back again to John Merritt Hull. Quarter of the way through the match, still 1-0 to Chelsea, but Hull have just hit the post. Terrific piece of play from Kusan, went past his man, low shot, came back off the foot of the right post as he looked. So, close thing for Hull, but Chelsea still lead 1-0. Thank you, Nasri for Arsenal. Works it back into midfield and to Nielsen. De Nielsen thought about giving it to Fabregas. Instead, it's gone to the left-hand side. And Clichy, back again to De Nielsen. Ball played into Nasri, who's come into the centre now. Van Persie picks up the ball in the deep. Van Persie square to this near side. And Sanya Walcott waiting patiently. Walcott has it. Only had a buyer in the penalty area. It's played back now to Nasri. Nasri's cross in. Headed away by Huddleston, using his height to good advantage. And now Bentley, as you'll gather from some of the noise behind me, has the ball for Spurs for over on the far side. Just the one Premier League appearance by Bentley for Arsenal, and that was away to Portsmouth. Never played a home game, never started a home game in the Premier League. And now Tottenham have played it out. Genus can't find Bentley over on the far side, and Arsenal have a throw. And let's get early news now from Mike Sewell at Stoke. Midway through the first half here. It's still Stoke nil, Sunderland nil, but Stoke have had two decent chances, the best of which fell to Ricardo Fuller. One of Rory Delap's trademark long throws was flicked on by Mamadi Sidibe, and Fuller from only six yards out prodded towards goal, and uh, Anton Fernandan didn't know a great deal about the ball that struck his thigh and went away from danger. Still Stoke nil, Sunderland nil. So it's Hull nil, Chelsea 1, Fulham 1, Wigan nil, and Kilmarnock nil, Celtic 1 in Scotland. Spurs, in the end, have to give up on that one. Bentley can't get there in time, and it's going to be a goal kick for Arsenal. Al Munir to take. Harry Redknapp looking thoughtful on the bench alongside Clive Allen and also Kevin Bond. There's talk of others, maybe former Spurs players, joining the backroom staff. Tim Sherwood has been mentioned. He was the player who scored what turned out to be the winning goal the last time Spurs beat Arsenal in the league, but that was way back in... 1999. He'll be pleased, Harry, with the start. You know, they, they have been patient. They've had a, quite a good line. They've not dropped too deep and they haven't been too far up the pitch. So they haven't left space behind them. So they've got a really good back back four line, which is important when you're going away from home is to establish where you're going to, where your back four is going to play a majority of the game. And the, uh, Woodgate's got them organised in that department. And Arsenal haven't got into any kind of flow yet as they lo love to do here at the Emirates Stadium. Now they have a possibility, and it's Gallas taking the ball into the Tottenham half. Arsenal playing from left to right. Spurs in their normal white shirts and navy blue shorts. Arsenal red and white. They lose their way once more in midfield. 
and it's Bentley. Hits it high, dinks it forward, looks for Pavlichenko to give chase. But again, it's travelled too far for him. And Almunia throws the ball out to Clichy. Arsenal building again from inside their own half. De Nielsen. De Nielsen for the captain, Gallas. Sanya available. Gallas just gets his head up and then plays it into the centre circle. Switched by De Nielsen towards Walcott. Walcott and Asuakoto, and it breaks for Adebayor. Adebayor trying his luck against Woodgate. Woodgate snakes in the leg, and Arsenal win the throw-in right by the corner flag near side the field. He's Arsenal a, nil Spurs. He's had a good start, Jonathan Woodgate. He's been really tight on Adebayor. Every time he's come short, he's gone in with him. Plenty of cover from his other centre-back. Sanya to Adebayor, and Walcott hits that with his left foot just wide. Arsenal's first real crack at Gomez's goal. Walcott didn't really perhaps get hold of it in the way that he would have wanted to, but there's the first scare, as Gomez was very close to getting his fingers to it as well and conceding a corner. It's a goal kick to Tottenham Hotspur. Good chance that was. Asura Koto just caught ball watching in the box and Walcott just wandered off him as the ball came back off uh, Adebayor. He got a good left foot, not his strongest foot, but a good foot, uh, good foot on the ball and uh, it wasn't far wide, was it? Maldrich uh, turning and winning a free kick. Danielson brings him down. Atkinson, the referee, gives Spurs the free kick on the edge of the centre circle. Little Luka Modric just knocks it sideways to the big Burley Huddleston. And now Spurs building down the right. Bentley trying to get away from a couple of Arsenal players. Feeds Huddleston once more, who's just sitting really in front of the back four. Now Pavlichenko can't turn around the defender, but it's Spurs keeping the possession once more. Asua Koto steps inside of Walcott. Looks for some help here. Lays it forward with his left foot. It'll be headed away by William Gallas. Nil-nil here between Arsenal and Spurs in the North London derby. Jermaine Genus now giving chase for Spurs. Still inside the Arsenal half. Genus linking with Bentley. Bentley from a long way out. Tries a shot. What a goal from Bentley. Bentley was almost back inside the centre circle. And he tried his luck from yards and yards and yards. Almunia was off his line and groping. And that is the most spectacular goal from Bentley against the club who sold him, Arsenal. It's Arsenal nil, Spurs one. Well, what a fantastic strike from Bentley. It came from nothing. I think it was, I think it was Sylvester just cleared the ball and it bounced down. Huddleston chested it down to Bentley and he's got to be 40, 45 yards out. Um, he's just flicked it up once on the volley, seen the keeper off the line and he's bent a right-footed swerving shot. As soon as he hit it, as soon as he hit it, you could see Almunu was struggling and he was always going to struggle to get a hand on it. He eventually got some fingers on it, but what a fantastic goal that is. Game on. That absolutely takes your breath away as Arsenal try and go forward. There was another uh, David B, wasn't there, all those years ago, who scored a goal from the halfway line for Manchester United. What a response from David Bentley as well, who'd been given as expected. I mean, he would have expected it from the Arsenal fans. A fair amount of stick here today. He's had quite a lot to say for himself. Uh, before Ramos was sacked, he said, and he was left out of that UEFA Cup game last week, we don't seem to know what we're doing. Well, he knew what he was doing then, Lee. That was well, you know when you see something special on a pitch, I always get goosebumps down the back of my neck. And even though, uh, you know, I used to play for the club, uh, Arsenal were caught there, and what a fantastic goal from Bentley. You've got to watch Match of the Day tonight to see that. It was just quite sensational. And something special I saw as, as Arsenal build now with Adebayor and there's a free kick to Arsenal now I saw Giovanni score a fantastic goal the last time I was in this stadium for Hull City that goal from from let me tell you now that goal from David Bentley is going to take some beating for goal of the well, season I actually, I had to, as, he, as he lifted the ball up I thought he's not going to shoot here is he and then he just launched it with yeah. the outside of his foot and it swerved so it's a great goal I can't get over it we're going to take you to Aston Villa in a moment but let's just stay with this Arsenal free kick, Arsenal and their fans stunned, the Arsenal fans know their football, they will have in a sense be full of respect for that goal because that was an incredible goal from David Bentley, you really do need to see that this evening on match of the day 10.45, fantastic effort from Bentley, now the free kick for Arsenal, it's Van Persie and Gomez seemed to see it late, concedes the corner, let's quickly go to Pat Murphy at Aston Villa. Excellent goal for Blackburn and Stephen Warnock, great work by McCarthy, who held the ball up to Warnock, ran past him, uh, pulverising left foot past Friedel, Villa nil, Blackburn won. Thank you Pat, well that's also surprising as Arsenal have a corner kick and Gomez was nowhere, that's gone off one of his defenders and it's a corner kick to Arsenal looking for a quick response here. Adebayor desperate to get the ball back from the crowd 
gives it to Van Persie. Arsenal nil, Spurs one. One of the best goals you're ever likely to see in the Premier League. And it's a corner kick for Arsenal, and it doesn't clear the first defender, who was Tom Huddleston. Comes back to Danielson, who picks out Clichy back inside the centre circle. Clichy, down the centre, are looking for Walcott. Walcott taps it back. Arsenal have Van Persie with a shot! And Van oh, was not very far away at all. From this angle, I thought that was going in in the end. It's just gone wide of the post for a goal kick for Tottenham. Well, two great efforts Van Persie just had. Firstly, from the free kick and a good save from Gomez and we saw perhaps a snippet of what Gomez is all about a good save then from the resulting corner a flap at a cross a mistake that went out for another corner and then, then Van Persie with a really good shot and we thought it was in from here but the angle we had it looked like we'd gone in the bottom quarter we're going to Manchester United and Conor McNamara Manchester United 1 West Ham 0 Cristiano Ronaldo has scored the opening goal here after a sustained period of pressure for the champions they had a few chances Tevez in the area Berbatov in the area the ball didn't go out of play it kept coming back and back and eventually Nani cut it back for Ronaldo very good finish into the bottom corner Manchester United 1 West Ham 0 the night is building here in the Premier League really is turning out to be very, very interesting. I'll remind you of the scores in a moment. Here we've had an absolutely stunning goal from David Bentley to give Harry Redknapp Spurs the lead. We're going to go to the team at the top of the Premier League at the moment, Liverpool, Portsmouth and Ian Dennis. And it's all Liverpool. Peter Crouch is isolated on his return to Anfield, but David James and other Liverpool old boys made a significant contribution, saving well from Dirk Cowart after an excellent move down the right-hand side, pushing the Dutchman shot onto the post. All Liverpool, still nil-nil. And back to Hull, John Murray. Still Hull nil, Chelsea won. That very, very good early goal from Frank Lampard in this match. Uh, Chelsea looking dangerous every time they come forward. But Hull have created opportunities as well. A free kick from Giovanni from 40 yards that Peter Cech had to beat out. And remember, Kusan's shot hit the post. But Chelsea lead 1-0. And we're going to hear from Ian Brown watching Bolton and Everton. Where it's 0-0 in the Northwest derby that hasn't attracted much of a crowd. Riga and Nolan have had cracks at goal for Bolton, but they've both been easily saved by Howard. Everton just having the better of it. A little bit of magic from Arteta, but Yakubu's header on the end of his cross was a tame one. It's still 0-0. Thank you very much. Can't get used to having so many Premier League games on at the same time. We're going to go to Middlesbrough in a moment, but here comes Spurs leading 1-0. Modric has the ball, and uh, Spurs visibly lifted by that goal from Bentley they have the ball through Modric again down that right hand side and that's offside against Hutton so here's Peter Slater at Middlesbrough where it's goalless between Borough and Manchester City although the home goalkeeper Ross Turnbull twice forced into action saving first from Rubinho after Ireland dispossessed a D-guard and then diving to his right to punch clear from Sean Wright Phillips so a decent start from City but it's goalless after 20 minutes thank you Stoke and Sunderland Mike Shaw uh, likewise here Mike Stoke nil Sunderland nil still the best chance falling to Ricardo Fuller, his stabbed shot coming off the thigh of Anton Ferdinand. Uh, say Olafin Jana also had a left foot drive from around 20 yards out. That was saved by Martin Fulop. Still Stoke nil, Sunderland nil. And also in London, Fulham and Wigan, Nigel Adley. Where Fulham still lead Wigan by a goal to nil. Andy Johnson scoring his first Fulham goal, turning in Paul Koncheski's cross and clearly an offside position. Wigan, though, have responded well. Their two Hondurans, Figueroa and Palacios, both going close. 1 nil to Fulham. Thank you very much. We're going to have a corner kick here to Arsenal. First, Kilmarnock and Celtic, Brian McLaughlin. Still 1-0 Celtic. Scott McDonald, the scorer, his fourth of the season, glancing at Sean Maloney, corner into the net. That goal has somewhat rattled the home side, who had started relatively lively, but still Kilmarnock nil, Celtic 1. It's a corner kick to Arsenal, over on the far side, rocked and stunned by a quite wonderful goal here from Tottenham's David Bentley. Arsenal still with... An hour to go in this game, in comes the corner, it travelled quite a long way, it was headed away then on the edge of the six-yard area by Spurs, and it's collected by Clichy over on the far side. Nasri takes over and feeds Danielson, who's back inside the centre circle. Everybody back now apart from pa Pavlichenko for Tottenham. Arsenal now moving it over that left-hand side of the field. It's played into Robin Van Persie. Van Persie tries to climb over a few challenges. Walcott digs it in, away by Chorluka, still not clear. Opportunity for Van Persie, and he just wanted that extra touch. And he's, in the end, denied by the defender. It's a corner kick to Arsenal, but they're starting to really apply the pressure now. Mike, he's got to hit that with his right foot. He had plenty of time on the edge of the box just to swing his right foot at it. As soon as he brings it back on his left, Gina's closed him down. Corner to Arsenal. 
High, higher one this time, looking for Galas. It's away by Chorluka, and Galas settles uh, for the throw in down this near side. Arsenal fans urging their team to respond here. They're trailing by one goal to nil to Spurs. Throw into Arsenal. Ball played back to Sanya, the right back. Sanya immediately closed down by Bale. Bale helping out his left back. Now Galas, just on Galas from inside the Spurs half, sends it all the way back to Almunia. Now, good, cliche for Arsenal. Good pressing from Tottenham there. They forced them all the way back to Galas at right back, and he ended up passing it back to Almunia, which is, shows that the midfield's all working together and closing the ball down. Adebayor onto Theo Walcott, just on the edge of the area. Walcott's ball in. Well, Hutton's conceded a rather unnecessary corner, I thought. He could have cleared that one, but he's decided to just waft it behind. And Nasri has the possession and has the ball and has the corner and waits for Sylvester and Galas to go forward for Arsenal. In goes the corner kick, swirling for Arsenal. Whoa! Gomez caught it and then dropped it. And it's now William Gallas. And uh, that's going to be a goal kick. I thought there was a deflection. Adebayo's appealing for a corner kick. William Gallas hit it very quickly and rather hurriedly. And it's gone over for a goal kick. But there you have the sort of eccentric goalkeeping once more from Gomez. Gomez a la Grobola there, wasn't he? I mean, again, another cross coming. Seemingly a simple one. He's so tall. He reaches so high for the ball above everybody else's head and then he dropped it and it was a chance that fell to Gallas. I thought he then got a, a deflection, it should have been a corner, but it wasn't given. But the trouble with Arsenal is at the moment they have to stay patient because what's happening is when um, they're, they're forcing the midfield, Danielson and Fabregas are pushing on and leaving that gap that we talked about before that Modric is just going to sit in. Just before those two chances, uh, Tottenham had a bit of space in that little hole that Modric is playing in. The Premier League games with goals, Aston Villa nil, Blackburn Rovers 1, Hull nil, Chelsea 1, Fulham 1, Wigan nil. Here comes David Bentley now for Spurs, dink ball in, and Almunia this time happy to see it go over his bar for a goal kick to Arsenal. Uh, terrific end-to-end -end stuff here. Elsewhere, Manchester United 1, West Ham nil. that was a Cristiano Ronaldo goal. So Lampard scoring for Chelsea at Hull, Johnson for Fulham against Wigan. And Warnock for Blackburn Rovers against Aston Villa. In Scotland, it's Kilmarnock nil, Celtic 1. But this is the game, really, which has had the goal of the night so far. I say that without, goal of the even, season. without even having seen any of the other goals. I'm, I'm quite confident in making that statement, I think. David Bentley's goal, long ball forward. A rather aimless one here from Arsenal. They tend to be more constructive than that normally. Mm. Spurs clear, and it's a good touch from Bentley on the ball. Huddleston's there helping him out in midfield. Sort of ambles forward Huddleston, and then drills it down the right-hand side. Hutton goes flying forward until a good challenge comes in from Gal Clichy, the left-back. And Spurs, halfway inside the Arsenal half, have a throw-in over on the far side there, right. Arsenal nil, Spurs 1. Harry Redknapp's first away game, if you can call it an away game, I suppose. Just down uh, the road. Now Adebayor, just inside the Spurs half. Good determined challenge comes in from David Bentley. And it's a throw to Arsenal over on the far side. Spurs haven't won away to Arsenal in the league since the Highbury days, the very first season of the Premier League. 1993, but uh, Arsenal fans will tell you it didn't count because it was only four days before the FA Cup final when uh, it was a much weakened side. Lee Dixon was left out, for example, and John Hendry scored two for Spurs. But that was the last time, and that was 15 years ago. Arsenal now, still plenty of time to get themselves back into this game. We're into the last half of this first half, and then Arsenal again give it away. Back to that man, Gomez. They've got to make it stick up front. If they're going to play balls up and then their midfield players are going to make runs off that, it's got to stick up front, and at the moment, it's not doing them. Probably, you know, Tottenham deserve the lead. Bentley started to get in the game on the right, and if you can get past Clichy as a winger, you're doing well, because for me, he's one of the best full-backs in the league. Going to ask you again about that goal in a minute, Lee, just in case anybody's not been with us. Uh, good, good point, really, that someone's just passed on to me. It was a fantastic goal, but... Having got a hand to it, should Almunia have done better? Well, the thing is with that, when you're diving backwards like that, because he was out of position, unexpected, over his head, when you're diving back towards the goal, it's so difficult to get any power. I know that because I play with Dave Seaman in the name from the halfway line game, <laughs> which was very similar. You know, he, he was diving back, and when you're diving back, you just can't get any power on it. And it was, we've seen on the monitor, we've seen how much it swerved away from him as well. But being no doubt that Bentley intended that one, that was absolutely going for goal, and he... He managed it, and that, that's the goal between the two sides so far. And now Asu Okoto has, um, right in front of the referee, 
foul Walcott and Arsenal have a free kick, which is just nudged off by Fabregas to Sanya. Now Fabregas tries to get it long, uh, hits a Spurs player on the way, and Arsenal gain about a dozen yards down this near side for a throw-in. Mike, were you suggesting that Naeem didn't mean it from the halfway line? Well, <laughs> not so much that one. I was thinking more about the, another oh, uh, right, David Seaman, yeah, the, yeah. the Ronaldinho one in the... Uh, no, he didn't mean know, that one. No, didn't exactly. That. So, but th this one was absolutely intended. You're listening to Sport on Five. Lee Dixon's with us here tonight at uh, the Emirates Stadium. Spurs are leading through a fantastic goal from David Bentley. He tried his luck from almost the edge of the centre circle and backpedalling all the time was Al Mooney. He got one hand to it, but he couldn't keep it uh, out of the net. And Harry Redknapp actually just getting a, a replay of that, looking quite cool, really, under the circumstances. No big celebration of the goal. He knows there's still a long way to go in this match. As Arsenal tidy up, it's a good bit of tidying up as well from Sanya. Finds Walcott back inside his own half. Walcott is denied by Genus. And uh, now Sanya is penalised by the referee for foul on Bale. And Tottenham can get a few players forward now, including Jonathan Woodgate. Hard for Woodgate to get a real central defensive understanding going at the moment. Losing Ledley King and playing tonight with Chaw Luca. Dawson suspended. Free kick and Bentley, the man of the moment comes across from the right to the left to stand over the ball. Free kick to Spurs, though, leading by one goal to nil. Plenty of height in the area. Huddleston, Pavlichenko, and Woodgate's there too. The free kick will be taken by David Bentley. In high, two fists from Al Munia before Huddleston can threaten. The ball drops to Hutton over on the far side, charging forward until Adebayor holds him up, and then Hutton just stumbles over the line. Adebayor's final touch presents Spurs with a throw-in, level with the edge of the Arsenal penalty area. 1-0 to Spurs. The ball is with Bentley, skimmed in towards the six-yard area, cleared by Arsenal, and Arsenal will now have a throw-in over on the far side of the field. Great ball in there from David Bentley from the free kick, in, whipping it into that near post. Goalkeeper, does he come out and punch it and clatter into players? It, it was a very brave decision to come off his line there, Almunia, and he made the right decision in the end, but good quality again from Bentley. Walcott goes past Genus, then has to check. Sanya helps him out. Arsenal keeping the possession, but going back into the centre circle. Sylvester now spreads it to the far side of the field. Arsenal nil, Spurs one on, Sport on five. I'll remind you of the other games with goals so far in a moment. Fabregas now, back to Danielson. Lots of passing from Arsenal, but Spurs have got all the bodies back behind the ball. Galas now giving it away. Woodgate was waiting. Woodgate up to the halfway line. Pavlichenko a little isolated, needing some support once more. In comes the challenge and, well, no free kick given. Referee was happy with that challenge. Arsenal take the possession. Blackburn are leading 1-0 at Aston Villa. Fulham 1, Wigan 0. Chelsea 1 up early on through Lampard at Hull. Manchester United 1, West Ham 0. That was Ronaldo. And in Scotland, Kilmarnock 0, Celtic 1. Here, a Bentley goal for Spurs. And we have 16 minutes to go in the first half at the Emirates Stadium. The ball is with Danielson. Danielson into Walcott. Walcott keeps his balance very well down this near side. Nasri's now joining in. Nasri, Van Persie's gone into the penalty area. Still Nasri. Can't find Walcott. Spurs managed to clear. Up to the man with the blue boots, Luka Modric. Modric is chased all the way by Sanya, who gets a good challenge in. Good competitive stuff there. Throw to Spurs. See a big difference in the, um, the, the Tottenham back line than the other week at Stoke. They, they, they were very indecisive at Stoke. They didn't realise didn't really re really know what line to play and when I, when I talk about that it's how high or how deep you play as a back four yes it helps when you 1-0 up and you've got four hard working midfield players in front of you but Woodgate's got a really good line going on with Chorluca there's no space behind them and when the ball goes tight they're first there Adebayor's had no space at all Van Persie likes to drop off in that hole but he's just running into Genus and Huddleston so they're struggling to find any space. I'd like to see Walcott get in the game a little bit more. And obviously Nasri on the other side have been passengers really so far. Arsene Wenger looking a bit exasperated at the moment. We'll go back to Liverpool and Ian Dennis. Rafa Benitez is feeling the same like it's still Liverpool nil, Portsmouth nil. The league leaders have dominated proceedings, but they really yet to click in the final third. Bubba Diop had a free header straight at Rainer for Portsmouth. Since you were last with us, Carragher's tested James from long range and Count's turn and shot from near to the area over the top. Still goalless at Anfield. Here comes Walcott for Arsenal. Tries his luck, wins a corner. We'll go to Manchester United, Conor McNamara. Still Manchester United 1, West Ham nil. Cristiano Ronaldo's goal inside the opening quarter of an hour. Nani is in sparkling form this evening. He's 
come close to his second goal. It's men against boys at the moment. West Ham have not managed a shot yet. Mind you, Everton played this badly in the first half on Saturday, and they did much better in the second half. So perhaps hope for West Ham there. But Manchester United won, West Ham nil for now. Thank you. Corner kick to Arsenal. Pavlichenko, I'm not sure how much he knew about it, but he managed to get his body in there and clear it. We'll go to Kilmarnock again and Brian McLaughlin. Kilmarnock nil, Celtics 2, Shinsky Nakamura, trademark free kick, 25 yards out into the top right-hand corner of Alan Combs' net. 2-0 Celtic. Thank you. This time next week we'll have Celtic and Manchester United for you in the Champions League. In the meantime, back to Pat Murphy at Villa Park. Equaliser for Aston Villa. Scruffy affair turned in by Luke Young, of all people. Paul Robinson not claiming a high centre. Mixture of knee, jockstrap, probably, but doesn't matter, Mike. It's the equaliser. Villa won, Blackburn won. Thank you. Unlikely goal scorers, it seems, really, in that uh, Warnock, I think, scored for Blackburn and Young there for... That's uh, not Ashley Young, Luke Young for... Aston Villa, Villa 1, Blackburn 1. Here, Arsenal building, but back inside, oh, lovely ball from Fabregas. Finds Walcott, they're trying to play it to Walcott as much as they possibly can. Nudged off by Walcott to Adebayor. Adebayor, with a sort of languid run of his, plays the ball into the centre of midfield. This is better from Arsenal, Danielson finds Clichy. Early ball in from Clichy towards Van Persie, may drop here to Walcott. Walcott trying to turn, Walcott shot! In the end, straight at Gomez. Good ball in from Clichy, that, wasn't it? And... Uh... Woodgate did quite well, I think he got the flick on it, but when it comes to Walcott on the far side, jinked back on his favoured right foot and got his shot away, but Gomez is good at them, as I said to you before, he's good at saving. All coming back at the Spurs defenders once more, Van Persie into Walcott in the area, Walcott with a shot and he delayed it, and in the end he struck it straight at the defender, Asu Ikoto. that was an opening for Walcott, Lee. it was, it was, he just needed to try and get a yard of space to get his shot away, but the fullback did really well, held his line, didn't dive in and Walcott in the end had to blast it. Oh, good effort from Clichy from 30 yards, but Gomez seemed to have it covered. But here, perhaps Arsenal not quite ruthless enough when they get the ball into the penalty area, the Spurs penalty area. Back to Old Trafford, Conor McNamara. Manchester United 2, West Ham nil. A second goal for Cristiano Ronaldo, but this was all about how Dimitar Berbatov set it up for him. A brilliant turn on the byline, bamboozled the West Ham defence, and he rolled it back in field. A simple tap in for Ronaldo. Manchester United 2, West Ham nil. Well, nothing like a scoreline here to get the Arsenal fans uh, roused because Spurs are leading by one goal to nil here and Pavlichenko going forward throws himself down on the edge of the penalty area still needs clearing by Gallas and Sanya in the end gets it back downfield to Theo Walcott who's taking a, a wee while to turn here Walcott Arsenal find themselves back on the edge of their own penalty area once more as we go back to Hull and John Murray half time in Hull Chelsea winning 1-0 through Frank Lampard's seventh goal of the season an excellent first time left foot chip after only two and a half minutes of the match Chelsea could easily have more but then Hull have had the odd moment as well most notably the shot from Cousin that hit a post half time Hull City nil, Chelsea won. That was a 7.45 game, the same at Fulham, Fulham Wigan, Nigel Adley. And it's Fulham 1, Wigan nil at half-time, a scrappy match with a goal which shouldn't have been allowed. Andy Johnson scoring his first Fulham goal in the 10th minute, although he was clearly offside when he flicked in across from Paul Koncheski. Wigan will believe they should be level, and Miyazaki placed a shot too close to Mark Schwarzer, and Paul Sharner headed over from two yards. Fulham 1, Wigan nil. We've got a stoke in a moment as Arsenal now step forward through to Nielsen, to Nielsen to Nasri down the left-hand side. Nasri's ball in slightly behind Adebayor. He can't turn, though. The Spurs defending was terrific, and now Tottenham themselves coming on a counter-attack, but Genus doesn't have too many options, and in fact, in the end, gives the ball away and then brings down uh, Daniels. And that was poor play from the Spurs captain on the night, Jermaine Genus. We get a Stoke and Mike Sewell. We're at half-time. It's Stoke nil, Sunderland nil. Stoke, the better team by far, and also with the better chances, the best of which fell to Ricardo. Fuller after 11 minutes, his prodded shot coming back off the thigh of Anton Ferdinand. Rory Delap's powerful long throws and Sadibi's height are causing Sunderland all sorts of problems. Sunderland, uh, Stoke nil, Sunderland nil. The other 7.45 game, by the way, is Villa Park, where it's 1-1. The luck. And uh, I think it might be half-time now. Pat Murphy. Oh, he's, we'll hear from Pat shortly. Anyway, here come Arsenal with much to do. And we have 10 minutes to go in the first half. Lee Dixon with us here tonight, watching something he hasn't really seen too many times over the last few years. Spurs winning away to Arsenal. Arsenal now look to Gallas, and Gallas finds Sanya. It's been played a little too slowly, but now Walcott gives them a bit of a burst. Here goes Walcott flying for Arsenal. Still Walcott jumps around the challenges. Van Persie, lots of white shirts around him. Van Persie can't get the shot in. 
And in the way was Choluka, who then slips as he tries to clear and now gets back on his feet quickly because Arsenal have the ball. Arsenal now through Clichy. Clichy to Nasri over on the left-hand side. There are three Arsenal players in the penalty area, if the cross can come in. It's played back, though, to Clichy. Clichy once more to Nasri. Nasri goes past the first first player, who was Genus. But now there's another one waiting for him. Has to give it away. Finds Danielson. Danielson in with some urgency towards Van Persie. The referee says play on as Arsenal build once more. Fabregas under pressure from Modric. Fabregas with Modric sort of snapping at his ankles. Arsenal forced to go sideways. Sanya in field now to Danielson. Danielson to Gallas who stepped forward. Now Walcott once more. Walcott though can't go past Huddleston. Great interception from the England under-21 man. But Spurs lose the ball straight away. Now they have a chance on the counter-attack. Bentley needs some options here. Bentley against Clichy. Clichy comes in and the referee says play on again. The Spurs look for a free kick. The ball down the Arsenal left. Adebayo is waiting for it to come into the area. Shot right across the ball in the end from Cesc Fabregas, who's appealing for the corner kick, and the referee's given it. Well, a great passage of play there from both teams. Tottenham defensively and Arsenal with the ball, and they created the chances by a bit of pace from Walcott, but I just looked in the box and there was ten Tottenham players defending for their lives. Well played both sides, it was brilliant football. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Arsenal nil, Spurs one. It's an Arsenal corner kick. Oh, and Gomez has lost it. And Mikel Silvestre was there to head in the equaliser. The corner kick was taken by Van Persie. And Mikel Silvestre, once of Manchester United, scores with his head. And Arsenal level with Spurs, 1-1. Well, it's not for me to tell Harry Redknapp who, who his signings are going to be, but he'll be looking at the goalkeeper for sure. Gets nowhere near that. If you're going to come off your line, you have to make contact with the ball. He comes off his line. We've seen over the last few weeks him do that. He's made contact, more contact with his defenders over the last few weeks. Comes to punch. It's the third cross he's missed. And uh, Sylvester just gets in front of him and, and heads into an empty net. You have to say that, that it was coming as far as Arsenal pressure, but... The defence that the Tottenham have put have been impregnable apart from the, the couple of mistakes that the goalkeeper's made and it's cost them. Sylvester's first goal for Arsenal. It's Kilmarnock nil, Celtic 2 at half-time in Scotland. And uh, we have a North London derby here. And having scored such a fantastic goal, Spurs, what a poor goal to concede, Lee. Poor defensively. I mean, the, the defenders are in the right place. As the ball comes in, you have to attack the ball. Gomez has taken it on himself to come and punch, and he's got nowhere near it. Here comes Modric now for Spurs, looking for a quick reply. Modric tries a shot, very optimistic, that one. That's five yards wide of Almunia's left-hand post. Uh, there's a great atmosphere now around the Emirates Stadium. 1-1, and still seven minutes to go in the first half. Elsewhere, Manchester United leading West Ham 2-0, Ronaldo 2. Still Bolton 0, Everton 0, Liverpool 0, Portsmouth 0 and Middlesbrough nil, Manchester City nil. A really good scrap here between these two. Arsenal getting the support now as Fabregas, who, who did really well in uh, forcing the corner in the first place, for Arsenal to equalise. And now Tom Huddleston for Spurs. Finds Hutton down the Spurs right. Hutton charging in field. Loves to go forward, Hutton. The ball might break to Bentley down the right. In comes a cross from Bentley. Well, Al Mooney decided to punch that one. From here, it looked as if he might have been able to catch it, but he's punched it to the far side, and Spurs quickly take the throw. Huddleston, high ball into the area, but that's going to run away from everybody from Spurs, and it's a goal kick to Arsenal. Unusual choice, that, to punch that one, wasn't it? It was, seemed, seemed like it just catch on his chest, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure he knew he knows better. He was a little bit out of position, and he thought it was going to go to the near post, a little bit shorter than it did, and he's just dived and double punched it like the, the, the foreign goalkeepers do, but... At the other end, Gomez really needs to sort his crosses out. I mean, I feel sorry for Woodgate and Chorluca because they've, they've kicked, they've headed, they've battled, they've kicked everything away, and when it comes to a simple corner like that, to free goalkeeper to come over the top and miss the ball, it's really criminal. Sylvester Lee obviously bought to defend, but do you think he's been quite a shrewd acquisition by us? Yeah, I do. I think, you know... You have to look at Sir Alex Fergus, if he's letting Sylvester go, then you, you question the signing, but then you see who signed him, and it's Arsene Wenger, so... Walcott spins around Asa Ikoto. Walcott, in the end, uh, almost presented the ball to Woodgate in the end. Sometimes he's too quick for himself, even Woodgate, uh, Theo Walcott. 
and now Modric's almost caught in possession. Spurs have to be careful now, they have to get the half-time. They've had a really good first half, they led through a thrilling goal, but now they're coming, and it's with Bentley down that right-hand side of the field. Another ball in from Bentley to test the goalkeeper. He's just getting a bit carried away, I think, David Bentley. And now a terrific throw out from Almunia finds Theo Walcott on the halfway line. Walcott into Fabregas inside the centre circle. Fabregas gets away from Bentley. Still Fabregas. Now he's got Huddleston up against him, but he's managed to turn and tries to find Adebayor, who was waiting for that one to come on to him. Chor Lucas' desperate clearance, though, straight back again to Arsenal. And Spurs hanging on a little bit at times when they're defending here. Danielson to the far side finds Clichy in space. Clichy just inside the Spurs half. Arsenal playing from left to right. 1 1 at the Emirates. Bentley for Spurs and Sylvester a few moments ago with a header from a corner. Little Nasri now down the Arsenal left. Arsenal just keeping possession. Clichy down the line ball to Adebayo who got away from his marker superbly. Arsenal keeping it. Now they play it further down the line to Nasri. Nasri's waiting for Clichy to make a run. Nasri finds Clichy. Clichy whips in the cross. Gomez looking for Asuikoto to deal with it. Woodgate in the end clears. But only as far as Danielson again. And Spurs are just giving it straight back too many times here to Arsenal. Putting themselves under pressure. Silvestri, the goal scorer, now back inside his own half. Finds William Gallas. Fabregas, who seems to be absolutely everywhere as always. Arsenal building now. Nasri's playing at left back. He's got Clichy on the outside. Nasri rolls the ball to Fabregas. Touch back to Danielson. Arsenal patiently trying to work an opening. Nasri appealed for handball there, not given. Spurs through the midfield and played forward by Huddleston. But Gallas is there before Pavlichenko can threaten and it's headed back to Armunia. Just going back to that, the ball came in, a great ball in, I think it was from Clichy. And Theo Walcott standing out on the right wing when the ball's in the left-back position in the box. He's got to push in there and put the full-back under pressure. It was an easy clearance in the end. Fabregas again, dinking it forward. Adebayor's layoff this time behind Theo Walcott. In the games that are still being played in the first half, the 8 o'clock kickoffs. Manchester United lead West Ham by two goals to nil. Still Liverpool nil, Portsmouth nil. Liverpool will not want to spoil things having had that great win at Chelsea by being held by Portsmouth. Bolton nil, Everton nil, Middlesbrough nil, Manchester City nil. Chelsea, remember, one up at half-time at Hull through Lampard after two and a half minutes. Stoke nil, Sunderland nil, Fulham won, Wigan nil, Andy Johnson and Aston Villa won, Blackburn won. Blackburn took the lead in that game, but just like this one, the home side have come back to make it 1-1. Huddleston now for Spurs. Hutton helps him out down the right-hand side. Back again to Huddleston, who didn't really get much of a look in under Juan de Ramos. Zakora has been left out again by Harry Redknapp. David Bentley, remember, last week couldn't even make the bench for Spurs for the game against Udinese in the UEFA Cup, having come out with those critical comments of the former regime. Woodgate inside the centre circle. Spurs is having a bit of a breather here, having been under so much pressure from Arsenal almost really since Bentley scored. Asu Ikoto drills it forward. It's too strong for Modric. Silvestre has to be quick. Manages to find Van Persie on the halfway line. Silvestre's just gone down on the knock. Ball is played forward. Woodgate gets in ahead of Adebayor. Silvestre getting back on his feet slowly as Tottenham take the possession over on the far side. Bentley and Hutton, they've been linking together quite well in this first half for Spurs, down the right-hand side. Genus switches the play, finds Asu Okoto. Good ball from him now to Huddleston. That's better from Spurs. Huddleston on to Gareth Bale, playing on the left-hand side of midfield this evening. Now Modric, quite deep for him. Modric, square ball to Genus. Hutton's calling for it down the right. Now Hutton for Spurs, halfway inside the Arsenal half. Pavlichenko and Bale are in the penalty area. Hutton's having to keep it under great pressure from Nasri. And now it's back inside the Spurs half. And Shaw Luca, from a long way out, finds goalkeeper Gomez. I think both sides are waiting for half-time, aren't they? I think Arsenal put so much effort into attacking in the last 15 minutes or so. They've run out of pace a little bit. And Tottenham are just happy to pass the ball around. Almost Which is, which is fine. Yeah. But Arsenal need to just pressurise them a little bit. Because they've got, they've got back into the game. And the pressure's on Tottenham now to, to last till half-time. So... It's like a boxing match at the moment. They're both waiting for the bell, aren't they? 45 seconds of the first half to go. Maybe a minute. Token gesture, I suppose, of added time. And now it's Danielson for Arsenal. Danielson to Sanya. Down this near side, Arsenal's right. Walcott touched back to Danielson. Danielson with a very deliberate-looking ball forward. And uh, Bale taking no chances against two Arsenal players. Concedes the throw-in by the corner flag. Ball is thrown back to Danielson. And that's cut out by Asu Okoto. 
and Arsenal have a throw in and we've about five seconds of the first half to go plus says the fourth official one minute of added time throw to Arsenal Walcott on the ball think tennis nil nil between Liverpool and Portsmouth at half time we'll be going back to Mark Saggers at Anfield in just a few moments genus now for Spurs genus and that was all very hurried from Spurs as Arsenal closed down well and uh, take the possession once more and I would imagine you've uh, quite enjoyed this first half league. yeah it's been it's been a really intriguing game I think Tottenham have done really well apart from the goal I think they've set the line out they've, they've pressurized when they've needed to their, their midfield has been tight their back four for me has been has been the, the highlight I think Woodgate has marshaled them really well Chorluka who I've been a bit critical of, of late has played well as well and the one thing that's let them down is just the goalkeeper coming for crosses three crosses he's come for he hasn't got any of them and one of them led to a goal so I think Harry Redknapp will be pleased he'll be disappointed that they're not leading but I think he'll be pleased with the point if it stays like this for the rest of the game he'll well, be more than happy we're about to have a Harry Redknapp team talk for Spurs who haven't been behind yet under his management they're holding Arsenal here 1-1 as we approach half time there may be one more opportunity for Arsenal Arsenal building they're still a long way from Gomez goal away to our right Sanya gives it back and there goes the half time whistle so Harry Redknapp now makes his way briskly into the tunnel area below us to no doubt uh, Lee encourage his side quite a lot because yeah. they've given a lot to that first half but maybe just sort one or two things out I think they'll be really pleased uh, in, in the Tottenham dressing room uh, and Arsenal as well because they've got back in the game they're playing their passing stuff it's a really good it's set up for a really good second half because Tottenham will have to come out and do some more defending you can make sure about that because Arsenal have got the bit between the teeth now Arsene Wenger apparently unhappy about something I'm not sure what but he went off stomped off not happy anyway at half time here after a wonderful David Bentley goal to give Spurs the lead an equaliser for Arsenal a, a Silvestre header from a corner makes it Arsenal 1 Tottenham 1 as you can imagine most of the talk during the half time break here has been really reflecting on that David Bentley goal which uh, apparently was officially from 39 yards and he, he controlled it on his chest he was sort of on the edge of the centre circle really and then just before the ball hit the ground he chanced his arm, he saw Almunia off his line and Almunia managed to get a hand to it but couldn't stop it going directly and it was sort of shades of nine all those years ago in the Cup Winners Cup final so Spurs thrillingly in front but then Arsenal really kind of took over here didn't they Lee and they did and, and in the end I suppose the softest goal for Spurs to concede Silvestri's header from a corner yeah it was and, and, and as I said to you before I'm, I'm disappointed from my centre halves if I was a if I was a Tottenham manager because they played a proper game in the first half they were tight when they needed to be they dropped off when they needed to be and I thought they got the back line perfectly right but you can't legislate for, for a goalkeeper coming off his line uh, three or four times as we saw in the first half and making mistakes and, and it was only a matter of time before one of them fell to an Arsenal player and it did and Sylvester getting his goal um, an easier header he won't get as long as he plays till he's 40 a North London derby fiercely competitive no yellow cards no I saw the referee have a couple of chats with some players in the first half very sensible because if once you start giving them in a the North London derby or any derby for that matter it could, they can be like confetti so I think he's Mr Atkinson's refereed the game really well well it's going to be interesting to see what uh, impression what impact Harry Redknapp has managed to have on Spurs in particular as they start the second half playing from left to right their lineup: Gomez, Hutton, Chorluka, Woodgate and Asu Okoto, Huddleston, Bentley, Genus, Bale, Modric and Pavlichenko but for the first time in the second half, Arsenal going forward over on that right hand side. I'll give you their lineup in a moment. Um, over on that far side is Robin Van Persie. And this is going to be a free kick to Arsenal. Referee didn't like the challenge on Van Persie, who's now standing over the ball. And as the crowd settle down for the second half, Silvestri goes forward with William Garras, Adebayor's there as well, and Sanya in the penalty area away to our left. A free kick to Arsenal. 1-1 one, one here. And it goes! And it's William Gallas who celebrates. The free kick was taken by Robin Van Persie. And Spurs have been undone yet again with a headed goal from a set piece. Van Persie in the first half a corner. Now we have a goal from a free kick after only 48 seconds. Whatever Harry Redknapp said at half time has got out of the window. And Arsenal lead 2-1. Well, I was just I was keeping my eye on the goalkeeper because it was one of those where he could have come off his line and made a mistake again so I had mine and Gomez and forgot to watch the ball and as it comes in I think uh, Carl Choluca it is who, who gets out jumped by Galas and a, a simple header in the end and the goalkeeper no chance 
it's one of those where he doesn't come, he stays on his line, which is the right decision, but if you give a free header to a, a, a player of uh, Gallas' ability in the air, he's going he's gonna to hit the target, and he did, and two on Arsenal. Well, start the second half well would have been Harry Redknapp's overriding instruction as now Modric bends the ball into the far post. It's going to run away from Huddleston. We're going to go to Fulham in a moment. We'll just see whether Fulham can, whether Spurs can get back in here having gone 2-1 down now here at the Emirates Stadium. No, Spurs are right back in the deep as we go to Fulham and Nigel Adderley. It's now Fulham 2, Wigan 0. A second goal for Andy Johnson and no doubts about the validity of this one. A very clever goal as well. Bullard's quickly taken free kick. Johnson darted into the penalty area and slipped it beyond Chris Kirkland. Now Wigan trail by two. Well, I'm telling you, um, here at the Emirates, a lot of people, I think, would have missed that goal because there are still a lot of people reclaiming their seats for the second half. David Bentley now for Spurs with a ball in, dangerous ball in as well. Headed away well by Arsenal. It's really end to end here. Arsenal two. I haven't even had time to give you the Arsenal lineup in the second half. It's Almunia, Sanya, Galas, Silvestre, and Clichy, Walcott, Fabregas, Danielson, Nasri, Adebayo, and Van Persie. Well, despite the presence of players like Van Persie and Fabregas and Adebayo and Walcott, the goals have come from the two centre backs, the two Frenchmen, Silvestre and Galas. And Arsenal, who were a goal down here to Spurs in the North London derby now lead by two goals to one but here comes Spurs with Asu Okoto over on the left hand side ball played in, another dangerous one, it needs clearing by Nasri, Nasri's ball downfield well run by Choluka but it'll drop to Walcott over on the far side and here goes the sort of jet propelled Theo Walcott down the right for Arsenal needs a few players to join in and help finds Cesc Fabregas Fabregas 30 yards away from Gomez goal now Clichy near side Five live sport, Arsenal two, Spurs one. I'll remind you of the other scores in a moment as Fabregas now finds Sanya. Sanya down the right. Apparently, Arsene Wenger at half-time, when I said he was unhappy, it was with Sanya. He went to Sanya to complain about something that he'd done. Now here's Pat Murphy at Villa Park. A goal for Aston Villa and a collector's item, the right foot of Gareth Barry. He couldn't miss from about four yards out after all the hard work had been done by the excellent Agbon Hall. Squared it to Barry, couldn't miss. Villa 2, Blackburn 1. Thank you, Pat. Same scoreline here and same scenario, really, because Blackburn were in front. Villa now lead 2-1. And the same here, Arsenal, who were a goal down to Spurs, now leading by two goals to one. Both of the goals from set pieces. The goal of the night, though, from Spurs, from Bentley. Clichy finds Gallas, the goal scorer, who lays the ball off, and Ars Arsenal, once they've got the ball, are making it very difficult for Spurs to get it back again. Arsenal typically building, lots of little one-touches in midfield. Danielson on the edge of the centre circle, knowing that Fabregas will always be available. Ball played into Walcott. The challenge came in, but they're unable to deny Theo Walcott. Walcott holes and then gives it back in midfield to Cesc Fabregas. Fabregas looking for an opening here. Fabregas going forward. Lays it off to Van Persie down the left. Adebayor's calling for it. Little sway of the hips from Robin Van Persie. Then into the area to Fabregas. Spurs have to be careful here. The ball drops to Clichy. Clichy fires it in. Appeal the hound ball not given. Play on says the referee. The Spurs give it straight back to Arsenal once more. Arsenal with Fabregas and Danielson at the moment totally in charge of midfield. Danielson goes around a challenge. Shot is saved by Gomez. Corner kick to Arsenal far side. Well, they're under the cosh now, Tottenham. They've got everybody behind the ball, camped on the edge of the box, and, and Arsenal just picking passes off. They're not getting tight to the to the player on the ball. And when the ball's played in to feet around the box, they're standing off them a little bit. And it's a little bit like a training game at the moment for Arsenal. They've started this, this half so well. I think going back to the goal, Mike, one of the things that Harry Redknapp would have said is don't give any silly free kicks away in crossing positions or around the box and that's exactly it's a little shirt pull on the far side I didn't see it was on Van Persie and when you get a chance to whip the ball in the box and that's exactly what he did now they're facing a corner from Van Persie oh! and it was Silvestri again who got up and this time headed it wide there's a penalty at Middlesbrough Peter Slater it's a penalty to the home side 51 minutes played, Middlesbrough's David Wheater brought down by Neda Manua just inside the penalty area, seen the replays. I think Lee Mason just about got it right. Afonso Alves is going to take it down to my left. 
The scores are nil-nil. So it's Afonso Alves against Joe Hart. Lee Mason just making sure that everybody is outside the penalty area, that they're not encroaching. And Alves, whose own goalkeeper, Ross Turnbull, has really kept Middlesbrough in this game with a series of fine saves. He's just making sure everybody is outside the penalty area. And Alves is preparing to take this. The whistle goes. Alves steps up and scores for Middlesbrough. 52 and a half minutes played. It's Middlesbrough 1, the Manchester City nil. Thank you. Nine Premier League matches tonight. Arsenal leads Spurs 2-1, Aston Villa 2, Blackburn 1, Fulham 2, Wigan 0, Hull 0, Chelsea 2, Stoke 0, Sunderland 0, Bolton 0, Everton 0. It's still Liverpool 0, Portsmouth 0, Manchester United 2, West Ham 0, and Middlesbrough, as you've heard, 1, Manchester City 0. And in Scotland, Kilmarnock 0, Celtic 2 in the cup tie. The quarter-final... Arsenal have the ball, they have the lead. Galas just knocking it back to goalkeeper Al Munia and Spurs struggling to get possession here. Harry Redknapp just takes his seat for the second half and sees his team go behind for the first time. So Harry Redknapp finds himself behind for the first time as the Spurs manager again there's a foul on Van Persie, this time by Chor Luca. Referee Martin Atkinson wants to speak to him so won't allow Arsenal to take the free kick quickly. Well, this is where Harry Redknapp learns about his team now. Look, the, the character he's got in his in his team and his squad. Whether they can weather this storm and actually find a goal to get back in this game. You know, we've seen them in the past. Tottenham this season, they've they've got their heads down when they've gone behind, and they can't afford to do that. And not against a team like this who can they can pass you to death. To be honest with the Arsenal, Van Persie from roughly the place where Bentley scored for Spurs with this free kick left footed into the penalty area Choluka gets in Nasri tries his luck just inside the, there's a Spurs injury now inside the penalty area away to our left and the injury I think is to Jermaine Genus he's going to be okay hobbles back onto his feet again Gomez who's lost out twice here to set pieces against Arsenal good scrambling interception now by De Nielsen near side the field Aaron Lennon is being warmed up here by Tottenham, he's about to come on any minute now for Spurs. Hutton's chipped the ball forward, still in play now for David Bentley. Bentley up against two Arsenal players. Modric tried to help out Bentley, but now Arsenal coming once more on the counter-attack. Heavy challenge by Asu Okoto on Theo Walcott, and the foul is given. And the first yellow card of the night to the fullback Asu Okoto. That's probably about right, I think the referees give it the fullback a few chances, he's had a few kicks at, at, at Walcott and he's let play on and that time he just barged him off the ball and probably deserved a yellow card. Ten minutes gone in the second half and Gareth Bale is to make way for Aaron Lennon. So a positive move from Harry Redknapp. In the meantime, back to Brian McLaughlin, Kilmarnock Celtic. In this game on here is Kilmarnock 1, Celtic 2, Danny Invincible, the scorer, a free kick. Floated into the back area of the six-yard box. Knocked back across goal to Invincible, who had a simple task to knock the ball into the empty net. Kelly 1, Celtic 2. It's a great name, that. Invincible. That's what Arsenal were a few seasons ago, weren't they, when they had that run all the way through the season unbeaten. And they're leading here now tonight by two goals to one. Par for the course, I suppose the home fans will say, against Spurs. But Spurs making life very difficult for Arsenal before the break. Genus now as Spurs look to try and break. Lennon's just come on. He's playing over on that left-hand side of the field. And Arsenal take possession once more. Ball is played back to Gallas on the edge of his own penalty area. Gallas slips it to Sanya. Sanya's being pressurised all the time. In the end, Gallas thumps the ball to the halfway line. Lovely touch from Van Persie. Fabregas to Adebayor, trying to work the defenders down this near side. Challenge comes in from Hutton, but Clichy keeps it in. And Clichy now... Goes forward quickly for Arsenal. Van Persie into the area, looking for Walcott. Out comes Gomez, and Gomez gets their foot. Good play there, Van Persie coming deep, spinning with the ball, and then timing the run. Walcott, a diagonal run and a straight ball, and he nearly got him, but well done, the goalkeeper. Pavlichenko's just given offside. The flag was late going up near side. Modric thought he got it through to him. You know, it's a bitterly cold night here, but nobody really aware of the temperature right now. It's a, it's a terrific contest. As these games tend to be lead, don't they? Mike, I, I like um, when I've seen Lennon play. I like I like it when he plays on that left side and cuts in on his right foot. He's a player that offers so much potential, and he never quite, when I've seen him play, produces on a regular basis. And I think he's more effective on that left side, and he's certainly got the legs on Sanya, and Sanya's not slow. 
We're going to Liverpool, Ian Dennis. We've been playing for nearly an hour. It's still Liverpool nil, Portsmouth nil. Liverpool not at all convincing. The fans are becoming agitated and restless as Boo Diop thrashes one in from long range. Portsmouth keeping their shape well at the back. Only chance so far in the second half. Hoopier's near post header off target, nil nil. And Manchester United, Conor McNamara. Still Manchester United 2, West Ham nil. Ronaldo has scored both goals so far. Manchester United completely dominated the first half. Gianfranco Zola has brought on young Jack Collison at half time in place of Etherington, but it's a long, long way for West Ham to get back into this one. Manchester United 2, West Ham 0. Well now we are getting yellow cards David Bentley's just got one for a foul on Clichy. Ian Brown now joins us from Bolton. Still Bolton 0 Everton 0. The game is gradually getting worse. I didn't think that was necessarily possible. Lots of mistakes no fluency from either side Everton if you force my hand I would say just about the better team but it's Bolton 0 Everton 0. Well we'll go to Brian McLaughlin in a moment but here's another potential danger for Spurs, it's another free kick. This time it's taken by Fabregas and Gomez doesn't hold it. And Percy heads it back instinctively towards Gomez's goal, but he got right underneath it. And it's an easy save from Gomez. So here's Brian McLaughlin, Kilmarnock. Yes, now Kilmarnock won Celtic three. Super play by Celtic. McDonald and Brown combining to set up Aidan McGeady 12 yards out, drilled the ball into the back of the net. Kelly one, Celtic three. And let's update the whole Chelsea for you, John Murray. It is still Hull City nil, Chelsea two. Chelsea leading through those. Goals early in each half from Lampard and Anelka. Hull have taken off Boateng and more Marnie and brought on Garcia and Halmozy. But Chelsea are comfortable. They're winning 2-0 here. On Five Live Sport, thank you. We'll go to Pat Murphy at Aston Villa. Villa still winning 2-1, although Blackburn's still in this game. Emerton unmarked at the far post a moment ago. Toe poked it wide just after Barry's goal, the second goal for Villa. A stunning save from Friedel against Pedersen, who hits the ball beautifully with his left foot. Athletic volley, great save. Villa 2, Blackburn 1. Now, Clichy for Arsenal, leading here by two goals to one. And if Spurs go 3-1 down here, there's another yellow card being flashed now, this time at Huddleston. That ought to be game over, I think. So these are vital moments for Spurs. And they just started to lose their discipline a bit, Lee. Well, they, they, did, they did lose their discipline a little bit at Stoke. We saw that. They got back in the game and then Stoke took over in the second half and then there was a few rash tackles coming in and obviously a, a couple of sendings off in that game. So they've just got to be careful that they don't lose it because they're still in this game. You know, they, they, although they haven't had an awful lot of chances Tottenham in the game, um, they've been quite solid until uh, Arsenal got that that leading goal and now they seem to be getting picked off at will Arsenal go to Stoke at the weekend we go to Stoke Mike Sewell and Stoke have taken the lead and deservedly so they've had the better chances and the better possession through the game and this one came direct from a Rory de Lapp long throw from the left a low trajectory powerfully sent in and headed into the goal by Ricardo Fuller Stoke 1 Sunderland 0 the, the thing is here Arsenal are working so hard now so hard that Tottenham are having no control at all in midfield. They're having to play it very, very hurriedly. Back again to Hull, John Murray. Chelsea have got it one now, a third goal for them. It's Hull City nil, Chelsea three. And Maluda has scored this one from Ricardo Carvalho's pass on the left-hand side. Nicely finished from eight, nine yards out. So Hull City nil, Chelsea three. Three Spurs bookings in four minutes here. And uh, we always go on about the admirable quality of Arsenal's football, but it's the work rate right now which is impressing as Clichy now steps forward into the penalty area. Clichy lays it square, tries to find Fabregas. Bent on mistake at the back by Spurs, and a shot comes in. Oh, Adebayo should have made that 3-1. And from 10 yards out, he's thumped it wide. Well, that's not like him against Spurs. He normally, he normally scores, and he had a great chance. It was a mistake on the edge of the box. There's a ball bounced to him. Free shot, really. If he had a free shot, I think the defender just slightly maybe put him off, but he should have scored there. Well, Tottenham are just being denied any kind of composure here at all. The way that Spurs, are, that Arsenal are closing them down all the time. Uh, injury at the moment to Pavlichenko, but the game carries on. And uh, if, if he's injured, then Spurs now have the opportunity of putting the ball out of play. We'll go to Fulham and Nigel Adderley. And Fulham still lead Wigan by two goals to nil with 16 minutes to play. And as scores stand, Wigan will be down in the bottom three tonight. Two goals from Andy Johnson and no sign of a response so far. Fulham two, Wigan nil. Yeah, and at the moment, Tottenham are staying at the bottom. They would have needed to win this game this evening to move off the bottom. They were leading here 1-0 in the first half. They are now 2-1 down. It's Aston Villa 2, Blackburn 1. Fulham 2, a Wigan nil. Hull nil, Chelsea 3. Stoke 1, Sunderland nil. Bolton nil, Everton nil. Liverpool nil, Portsmouth nil. We're going to have a 
a Tottenham change in a moment, a second change as Hutton goes forward now for them. The ball finds its way to Bentley down the right. Pavlichenko's waiting. Bentley against Clichy. And he can't get the cross in here, Bentley. Clichy doing really well. It's an Arsenal throw in. So Liverpool nil, Portsmouth nil, Manchester United 2, West Ham nil, Middlesbrough 1, Manchester City nil, and Kilmarnock 1, Celtic 3. I've said it before, Mike, and I'll say it again. Clichy for me is top draw. Yes, he does make mistakes, but his energy levels going forward and defending. And he kept his eye on the ball there, and Bentley was doing all his tricks, and he just took the ball off him and it went out for a throw in for Arsenal. But he is a top class fullback. Darren Bent is coming on in a moment for Spurs. Now, Arsenal with a little bit of defending to do. And oh, and Silvestri just backed off there and Bentley was allowed to get a strike in at goal it was well hit as well by Bentley but Almunia was equal to it good save in the end because it bounced just before the goalkeeper and again Bentley get the outside of his foot on the ball creating a bit of swerve it skidded off the turf and he just before that I was saying how good Cleese he was he just beat Cleese then <laughs> who'd be a commentator Lee Dixon with us this evening for Arsenal 2 Spurs 1 Incredible now to think back and Bentley's great goal for Spurs giving them the lead and giving them so much heart But then Arsenal with an equaliser from a corner Silvestri heading in and then the second goal right at the start of the second half Another header this time from a free kick from Van Persie headed in by Gallas now Modric They need to have a bit more from him I think Spurs if they're to get back into this game Lennon stretches well down the left Bentley's gone across Lennon gets the ball in but he can't clear the head of Gallas Genus will try and win it back again against Robin Van Persie. Referee now allows play to continue. Arsenal looking for a free kick. Hutton with a misplaced pass and Arsenal clear. And this is often where they're at the most dangerous at home. On the counter-attack, but not like that. De Nielsen's pass to the far side was behind Theo Walcott. So here comes another Spurs change and here comes another forward player for them. Another England player too. I think Fabio Capello will be hoping that perhaps Harry Redknapp over the next few months can get the best out of some of these England players because there's certainly a big contingent of England options at White Hart Lane bent to come on soon Arsenal now with one of their Frenchmen Nasri Nasri to De Nielsen De Nielsen closed down by Hutton has to give it back once more to Clichy Clichy now with his left foot lifts it across the defence to Gallas Sanya's waiting Sanya receives Arsenal 2, Spurs 1. Now Van Persie, short of the halfway line, trying to get away from Jermaine Genus. Long ball down the centre, Nasri's going forward, out comes the goalkeeper, Nasri's lifted it over here, and eventually maybe out of my ear, got the final touch, just to make sure. Great counter-attack from Arsenal, a combination of Nasri and Adebayor, and it's Arsenal 3, Spurs 1. Well, it was a fantastic run through the middle from Nasri, he timed his run to perfection, and I think it was, was it Van Persie who played the ball? Yeah, he cuts in on his left foot, and what a fantastic ball. Split the full-back and the centre-back. He lifted it over Gomez, and just to make sure, Adebayor followed it in and took the ball and Hutton into the net. But it was a fabulous run, perfectly timed. Goalkeeper, no chance, and it might even be... No, I think Adebayor just got his boot on it. He'll certainly be claiming it. I think possibly Hutton would have cleared it. But had to be all just coming and, and, and po poked it in the net. And you have to say it was coming, Mike. Well, Bent is coming on for Pavlichenko, but it may not make that much difference now. There is a two-goal cushion for Arsenal. And Adebayor's done it again. That's eight goals he's now scored against Spurs over the last couple of years. He got three in the two Premier League games last season when uh, Arsenal did the double. Now, here come... Arsenal again, looking for a fourth. De Nielsen, edge of the centre circle. The game has turned around in this second half, but now Modric wins it back for Spurs. Modric goes as speedily as he can into Arsenal territory. Feeds Bentley down the right. Bent has just come on, is trying to time his run to get on the end of this. Modric skims the ball wastefully to the far side of the field. Arsenal have a throw-in, and Tottenham now really need lifting, don't they? Well, they do. They look dishevelled, they look... Uh, well, they haven't got any ideas going forward now. They tried to break there. It was three v four, and, and they took too long on the ball. In the end, Modric knocked it out to the invisible man on the left wing, and it's gone out for throwing. But they just need to get together. You, you, you would, you've seen this before this season when, when they've gone behind that they haven't been able to claw themselves back into the game from, from a team effort. So that's something that Harry's going to have to work on on the training pitch with and with personnel. You, you need leaders on the pitch, and at times this season. 
well, most of the time this season, uh, Tottenham haven't had it. Bottom of the table, and on Saturday, they're going to be at home to the team at the moment on the top of the table, Liverpool. Modric of Spurs, trailing 3-1, tries to get it on to Bent, Huddleston with the drive, Almunia's let it go, in goes Bent, and it's 3-2. Suddenly, Almunia fell to hold the strike from Huddleston, Darren Bent was following up, and maybe there's still time here. Arsenal 3, Spurs 2. Well, what you say about that is, first and foremost, what a great strike, and it was Huddleston just gets the ball, hits it first time, then you say mistake by the goalkeeper and then you say mistake by your two centre-backs for not following the ball in and well played Darren Bent because he didn't give it up and he put it into a, the corner of the net and as I said the game's over but it's not quite over yet <laughs> <laughs> two minutes after coming on what a genius Harry Redknapp is with his changes Darren Bent scores to give Spurs some hope and we've still got half of this second half ready to go <laughs> And we did a sweep state before the game <laughs> and um, our engineer Adam I think went for 4-2 didn't he to us we, la we laughed at him didn't we we said 4-2 and it's uh, it could well be or it could, could well be 3 all if uh, Tottenham get another strike on goal like that here are the other scores in the Premier League tonight Aston Villa 2 Blackburn 1 Fulham 2 Wigan 0 Hull 0 Chelsea 3 Stoke 1 Sunderland 0 Bolton 0 Everton 0 Liverpool 0 Portsmouth 0 still Manchester United 2 West Ham 0 Middlesbrough 1 Manchester City 0 it's 3-1 to Celtic in Scotland and now here comes Adebayo for Arsenal Adebayo into the area Van Persie 4-2 Arsenal get it back almost immediately it's that free-flowing football and a terrific finish in the end from Robin Van Persie makes it Arsenal 4 Tottenham 2 our sound, our sound engineer's headphones have just fell off. <laughs> he's jumping up and down. I don't know who he supports, but he doesn't care because he's got 4-2 in the sweep. <laughs> and it was a fabulous strike in the end. And as Adebayo did really well on the ball on the left-hand side, he's cut inside and Tottenham caught 3v2 at the back. And when it fell to Van Persie, you expect him to check on his left foot. But he took a swipe at it with his right foot, unfavoured right foot. And what a strike. Gomez got no chance. Well, it's fantastic entertainment. I'm not sure about some of the defending, but it's... No, it's no, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I, I didn't look at Harry Redknapp's reaction, but he will be going mad. They've just got themselves in the game, and then they go throw course into the wind and get caught 3v2 at the back. And it's a big mistake, and he won't be happy with that for sure. Well, Van Persie probably deserved that, having laid on the first two. Adebayo's got one as well. Tottenham go to the other end, and Darren Bent is a judge to a foul, the cliche. And <laughs> Spurs have to settle for an Arsenal free kick. Amazing stuff here. Arsenal 4, Spurs 2. Fabulous game of football, yeah. not, not just for the goals, you know, we've got, we've got one team going at it like we know they can, they're passing the ball, they're trying to create things, Tottenham doing the best to stay in the game and defending really well at times, and then really poorly. Goalkeepers making mistakes at both ends, mistakes from defenders, and it's end-to-end, -end. there's no team, there's no team uh, making it too tight that you can't play, that Everybody's trying to pass the ball, and at times, Arsenal's passing is absolutely exquisite. Still a great pace about the game. I'll do my best to remind you of all the goal scorers. It, it, there's a chance in a few moments as in goes Fabregas tackling as if his team are 3-0 down over on the far side. It's a throw to Spurs, thrown furiously to Huddleston, headed away by William Gallas. Spurs fans thought they were back in it for a few moments when Darren Bent made it 3-2. Now the Arsenal fans on their feet as Huddleston's got a bang in the face. So here so far, Bentley from almost the halfway line gives Spurs a 1-0 lead. It's 1-1 at half-time. Silvestre heading in Van Persie's corner kick. Then right at the start of the second half, Gallas, the Arsenal captain, heading in a Van Persie free kick. 3-1 to Arsenal then when Adebayo just finished off a, an effort which might have been going in from Nasri. Bent made it 3-2, having come on as a substitute. And now Van Persie has made it 4-2. Emmanuel Ibui will come into the game in a moment. Arsenal now across the field finds Sanya. I suppose Sanya could be the man coming off, Ibui coming on. We'll have to wait and see. Danielson now, threaded back by Van Persie to the halfway line. And now Silvestre for Arsenal. Arsenal keeping the ball and making it very difficult for Tottenham to get it back again. Fabregas once more linking the play. Gallas, Gallas to Walcott, and back again to Gallas. You're listening to Five Live Sport, the North London derby, Harry Redknapp's first experience, and it's one he's going to remember. Whatever happens, it's 4-2 to Arsenal. 
The ball is back again with Silvestre. Galas for Arsenal. Up to the halfway line under Nielsen. And they're just working it around here. And Tottenham unable to get anywhere near the ball. And Al Munia clears. Ibu is waiting patiently to come on. Nasri easily beaten in the air by Woodgate. The ball available inside the centre circle. Modric gets there first. Back to Anfield. Ian Dennis. Penalty to Liverpool. Liverpool nil. Portsmouth nil. It was Buba Diop who's handled the ball as Hoopier went in with a near post header. And in front of the cop, with 15 minutes remaining, Steven Gerrard has the chance to keep Liverpool at the top of the pile. They've made heavy going of this against Portsmouth. Gerrard with a very short run up now with a penalty. Gerrard beats David James into the bottom left hand corner. Liverpool won, Portsmouth nil. Gerrard with the all important goal. Liverpool should stay top of the Premier League this evening. Thank you very much, Ian. I think just the one Premier League game then without a goal at Bolton. In comes a free kick for Spurs. And it almost found its way through. Almunia was there to make a save just two yards out. Back to Villa Park and Pat Murphy. Third goal for Aston Villa. Typical counter-attack from them. Young from the halfway line. Fed at Bon Lahore. His pace and an excellent finish did the rest. Villa 3, Blackburn 1. Thank you. By the way, Bowie still hasn't come on for Arsenal. The ball refuses to go out of play. Van Persie showboating a little bit. Spurs clear. And uh, Huddleston's beaten by Danielson in midfield. Lovely one-touch stuff from Arsenal. It's back inside their half and given back once more to Almunia in the goal away to our right. So Aston Villa 3, Blackburn 1, Fulham 2, Wigan 0, Hull 0, Chelsea 3, Stoke 1, Sunderland 0. Those are all 7.45 games, by the way. The 8 o'clock scores in a moment. Nasri now for Arsenal. Jinking run on the edge of the area. Still Nasri. Nasri plays Fabregas into trouble, but he gets out of it very well. Wilcott with a snapshot. Gomez makes the save. In the 8 o'clock games, Bolton 0, Everton 0, Liverpool 1, Portsmouth 0, Manchester United 2, West Ham 0. Middlesbrough 1, Manchester City 0 and here, remember, at the Emirates it's Arsenal 4, Spurs 2 in Scotland, Kilmarnock 1, Celtic 3 in the cup tie still Ibui waiting to come on here with 16 minutes to go the ball played forward to Bentley Bentley, he's got Lennon available down the left hand side eventually finds him, only Darren Bent in the penalty area Lennon hasn't got it in yet whips the ball into central midfield Huddleston knocked it forward and that's gone loose Arsenal will claim it and still Ibu is that, waits is that the longest warm-up in the history of warm-ups the ball's been in play for what <laughs> four, five, six minutes normally it goes out of play after a, a minute or so a goal kick or throw in or something but he's, having, he's having to do another full warm-up because he's been standing on the side uh, for so the long the problem for Ibu is that his teammates keep the ball too well <laughs> um, now it's Danielson that's a, an interesting ball to the far side of the field but it's headed away by Asui Koto before Walcott can challenge and the way things are going, Ibu is going to have to put a tracksuit on in a moment. He's going to get frostbite waiting to come on here at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal 4, Spurs 2. I think our engineer will be the summariser next game. I mean, the way that he forecasts 4 2, just like that, you know. And we all ridiculed him, didn't we? But he's going to get the money. It's not over yet. All three quid of it. Here comes uh, Fabregas. Fabregas now to Nasri near side the field. Nasri works his way forward. In comes across, right across the of the goal here, Robin Van Persie came sliding in and now Emmanuel Ibui after his 25 minute warm up can come on for Theo Walcott fabulous uh, fabulous cross from Nazareth from the left hand side and Van Persie probably won't get an easier chance all season, it just needed to get anything on that and it was in the goal because it was a great cross into a dangerous area and Theo Walcott getting the applause from the, uh, the Arsenal faithful because he's put a shift in today not as exciting and dynamic as he can be, but he's had a couple of good runs towards the end of the first half that just made Tottenham sit back a little bit. And uh, another good game from him. He's learning all the time. He's got to learn how to work his fullback, which he's doing. Getting at the far post when the ball's on the left. All little things that you pick up as you, as you go through your education at, at Arsenal. But in the first half in particular, never really allowed Esua Koto to settle down completely. He was always aware of the threat from Walcott, who had a couple of openings, didn't manage to put them away, but he's played his part, and now Modric has the ball for Spurs. Spurs playing from left to right, but giving it away too cheaply. That was a mistake by Lennon. Now Danielson's caught in possession by Genus. Genus trying to lead his side back here. We've got just under 15 minutes to go. 
That's what they've got to do, Mike. They've, I mean, the 4-2 down, they have to press the ball higher up the pitch, take a chance that they're going to win it high up there and attack. If they do lose it, they, they, they run the risk of being hit on the break, but 5-2 is no different than 4-2. Harry Redknapp's former club under Tony Adams, now Portsmouth have just gone behind to a Gerrard penalty at Liverpool. Liverpool, the leaders, remember. Chelsea leading 3-0 away to Hull City. They scored after only two and a half minutes in that game through Frank Lampard, so 3-0 to Chelsea, it's 2-0 to Manchester United, just cut out now by Chorluka, awkward bouncing ball in the Arsenal half, a cliche, uses his head well, and then knocks it back once more to Almunia in the goal, away to our right, just reminding you that Liverpool began the day, three points clear of Chelsea and Hull City, Arsenal were in fourth place, four points behind Liverpool. Arsenal look as if they're going to go above Hull City. Here comes Ibui now for the first time, but tracking him is Asu Ikoto, who clears, big deep one, up to the halfway line. Modric reaches for it, in steps William Gallas. Really good play by the defender, takes the ball away cleanly from Modric. And then Silvestri thought about the back pass instead, gives it back to Gallas, and we're going to get our first full-time report, I think, Hull Chelsea, John Murray. And it's finished, Hull City nil, Chelsea 3 which represents a very good response from Chelsea to Sunday's defeat. Lampard's very good early goal, and Nelka and Maluda scored in the second half. Hull did pose them problems, but it's five away wins out of five for Chelsea in the league after their 3-0 win here in Hull tonight. Thanks, John, but uh, an easy one for Hull to pick up the pieces from at the weekend. I think they're away to Manchester United on Saturday, so uh, Hull nil, Chelsea 3. Great response from Chelsea, having lost to Liverpool and all the other scores coming your way over the next few minutes on Five Live Sport. Here, if Spurs could get one more here, they may still feel, with over ten minutes to go, they've got a chance. Their fans looking a little quiet now in that corner over on the far side to Almunia's right. Throw in two Spurs, Hutton to take it, and Gunter will be the third and final Spurs substitute to come on in a few moments. Just getting some words down there from Clive Allen as Chorluka heads it forward oh Silvestri's header back Darren Bent angle is awkward for him in edge of the penalty area Bent has to bring it towards the touchline to keep possession gives it back to Hutton Hutton floats it in doesn't find Modric Silvestri's header away Arsenal bringing it forward Van Persie oh, played it through Huddleston's legs Fabregas now making the run over on the far side is Sanya Fabregas's ball to Sanya only Adebayor in the penalty area Sanya works it back to Ibui as Gunter, the Welshman, waits to come on for Spurs. Fabregas gets in ahead of Huddleston. Still says Fabregas, bobbing and weaving on the edge of the area. The ball played, though, behind Nasri, and the fact that Fabregas was too strong for Huddleston there really tells its story in the second half. Back to Pat Murphy at Villa Park. Consolation goal for Blackburn. Brett Emerton direct from a free kick. Good effort, curling right foot shot. Shan't really mean much of a difference, I'm sure. Last minute, Villa 3, Blackburn 2. Thank you very much indeed, Pat. So, Alan Hutton comes off, and Gunter will come on for uh, Spurs' Chris Gunter. I'm not quite sure how that's going to help Spurs get back into this game. Maybe Hutton's got an injury problem. It looks Gunter's like going to play just, right back. Just like, it looked like he was limping a little bit when he came off. I think it looks like he's got an ankle knock or something. And Pat Rice is also, I think, calling Diaby over. Maybe he might be the next Arsenal player to come into this game. We've got ten minutes to go here. Six goals we've had, 4-2 to, to Arsenal. And uh, the man who scored the first one for them, Silvestre, gives a back pass to Almunia. High ball downfield from Almunia. Adebayor allows Gunter to head it back and out of play. It's a rusty first bit of contact with the ball. Scratches his head. <laughs> and it's a throw to Arsenal and Clichy to take it. Now we've got a full time from Stoke, I think, Mike Shaw. And Stoke heading out to the bottom three. Ricardo Fuller's header from Rory Delatch, long throw midway through the second half, has given them a richly deserved victory here at the Britannia, Britannia Stadium. Stoke won, Sunderland nil. Thank you. Full time now, Kilmarnock, Celtic, Brian McLaughlin. Marlon won, Celtic three, McDonald, Nakamura, and man of the match, Jaden McGeady, the scorers for Celtic. Kelly's only response coming through, Danny Invincible, has Gordon Strack inside, though, safely through to the semi finals. Kilmarnock won, Celtic three. And Villa have beaten Blackburn by 3 2. More on that in a moment as Fabregas spends the ball in out of Ayol's head. I just, just quite fall for him there. It was a stooping header from Adebayor, and he's headed it in the end well wide. It was a terrific whipped ball in from the right hand side. Robin Van Persie now, having done his shift, comes off and uh, 
Arsene Wenger perhaps now trying to close the game out here brings yeah. on Diaby. And what, what Arsene Wenger is really good at is things like this. Diaby, everyone was calling for Diaby to be in the team after his excellent performance in Europe. But he, he, he's been coming back from injury and he just knows when to play a player and when not to. And he, as I say, I've said this before, sometimes he used to pull players to one side, me included, and say, you're looking tired and you felt actually all right. And what, what, what he could see is that in a couple of weeks' time you're going to be tired. So he pulls you out of the, of the fray just before you start to, your performances start to drop. And he's, a, he's an absolute genius at knowing when to pull a player out and when to put one in. Nigel Adley now at Fulham, Nigel. And it's finished, Fulham 2, Wigan 0, Fulham's first league win since mid-September. Four defeats in a row now for Wigan. Andy Johnson with a goal in each half, his first for his new club. Wigan never mustered anything like a response. 2-0 to Fulham. Back to Manchester United, Conor McNamara. United 2, West Ham 0, both goals from Ronaldo in the first half. Rooney and Carrick have both been brought on in the second. Rooney looking for his 100th league goal, and he's had two good chances, both saved by Robert Green. The first was a lob touched over the crossbar. The second one, an absolute blaster that was parried away. Manchester United 2, West Ham 0. The only one of the nine, I think, without a goal. Bolton, uh, Ian Brown. Yes, it's still Bolton nil, Everton nil. We're inside the final ten minutes of this one, but Bolton have certainly improved. They've had the better of the last 20 minutes or so. Almanda has had a shot deflected just off target, and Riga stung the arms and the legs of the goalkeeper, Howard, with a shot from outside of the penalty area. It bubbled away from Howard, but he recovered. It's still Bolton nil, Everton nil. And next, Peter Slater at Middlesbrough. It's all right, Phillips fires into the side netting. Still 1-0 to Middlesbrough, that penalty from Afonso Alves after Sturridge fouled David Wheater. Turnbull's added to his first half saves with excellent stops from Ireland and then with his feet from Wright Phillips. But Tunchai always lively for Borough coming forward. Middlesbrough 1, City 0. <coughs> Liverpool fans will be aware that Chelsea have had a good win tonight. Back to Liverpool and Ian Dennis. And Liverpool still leading by a goal to nil. That Gerard penalty after 75 minutes, but moments ago they had a scare. Bell Hadj with a cross from the left hand side. Utsaka completely missed the header. What an opportunity that was. Liverpool 1, Portsmouth 0. It's another one of those nights though and I'll get a comment from Lee in a moment the big four pulling away again this evening and they haven't conceded either Chelsea 3-0, Liverpool 1-0 Manchester United 2-0, Arsenal here oh, well, Arsenal have conceded obviously 5-4-2 five, five, four, four, what a great week Lee it's been for Arsenal it was 5-2 wasn't it last week in Europe then the, the big win at West Ham at the weekend and well, I said, again we said before the game that they were hitting form and when this team does hit form and they're, they're passing and their attacking options are, are, are frightening and as I said to before, defensively, they could brush up on a few areas. And it's shown tonight, they give a couple of goals away. Arsenal won't be very pleased with that, but I'm sure they'll work on it in training, watch the video and try and improve in that department. But I think, it's, I think this team has got an awful lot to offer. And going back to Harry Redknapp, what does he learn about a defeat? I think you can learn all, an awful lot about a defeat like this because he's now looking at the players individually and collectively and saying, where's my weakness? Where, who are the players who are not quite on it now? when things are going poorly um, and, and you can learn from defeats and he must have question marks about the goalkeeper I would imagine Gomez would you think yeah I think so I think you know he, he's a good shot stopper we've seen that tonight he's made a couple of really good saves but you know where it counts when your defenders want you to come and, and collect a ball to take the pressure off you you want him to come high and, and collect or punch he's done neither tonight he's flapped at a few and when he has chosen to punch he's punched poorly uh, and he's been out of position a couple of times on crosses, which has cost them, you know, cost, cost them goals. Um, a fourth Tottenham booking. Now, that must have been presumably Gina saying something because he's just got a yellow card. Referee Martin Atkinson has given it to him. So Asso, Koto, Huddleston, Bentley and Genus yellow cards this evening. It's 4-2 to Arsenal. 1-0 Liverpool lead against Portsmouth. Manchester United 2-0 up against West Ham. Chelsea have won 3-0 tonight at Hull. And the only game in the Premier League without a goal, Bolton, Everton. It's Middlesbrough 1, Manchester City 0. And the results are like this. Villa 3, Blackburn 2, Fulham 2, Wigan 0. And Stoke 1, Sunderland 0. Spurs are going to be rooted to the bottom here. Now Genus has got an injury to go along with that yellow card. He's not moving inside that centre circle as the ball is with Lennon down the left. High ball into the area. Bent was climbing above Gail Clichy, but couldn't target the header at all towards Almunia. And Albunia throws the ball out, and Sanya's on it already over on the far side. We have five minutes to go, 60,043 here for the North London derby. A very anxious one for home fans when David Bentley gave Spurs the lead. Silvestri made it 1-1 by half-time. 
in the second half, Galas and then Arabayor for 3-1. 3-2 when Bent pull one back for Spurs. Almost immediately, Van Persie, 4-2 to Arsenal. Arsenal, just for once, give the ball away. Huddleston, who's had a real chasing from Fabregas in that central midfield. Another misplaced pass from Spurs. Not a lot of sign here that there's going to be any kind of sting in the tail from them. Well, you look at them, both midfields, one of them sprightly because they get, they've get they got the ball most of the time. Fabregas is weaving his magic. And you look at Huddleston now, who looks a really tired man. He's done an awful lot of work and he's getting caught out of position and Fabregas is having a field day. He's played really well today. Harry Redknapp looking a little rueful as Adebayor and uh, philosophical almost. Adebayor's caught offside. Here comes another Arsene Wenger change. In the moment, as Jermaine Genus, who shrugged off that injury, finds Bentley. Bentley whips one in from 30 yards. This time he doesn't get any kind of clean contact. And that is out of play. That is going to be a goal kick to Arsenal. And Song is the man coming on, I think, finally here for Arsenal. Played in midfield while Danielson had a problem. Also played in central defence as well in recent weeks. So Wenger's change brings on Alex Song for Sami Nasri. And another bit of a readjustment here, but we've only got uh, about two and a half minutes to go, and Arsenal are going to win this game now very well with this two-goal margin. Nasri's had a good game as well. He's, he's all a big part of that passing game that, the, that Arsenal play, and when he's on his game, and he's, he's, again, he's still a young boy learning his trade, his quick feet, and he's got two good feet, actually. I was, I was surprised I've seen him use both of them tonight, and... I think he's played really well. Now, what's happened here is that Diaby's come across to the left-hand side as Tottenham lump the ball forward towards Bentley. Please, he's going to have to play this, and really did well. He played it off Bentley, and that's going to be an Arsenal goal kick. Ibui has pushed forward to join Adebayor, but they've got this uh, solid midfield now with Song and Danielson in front of the back four, Fabregas in the diamond as well. Ibui playing down the right, trying to link up with uh, Emmanuel Adebayor. Fabio Capello we see now for the first time, a television picture of him. who have been looking particularly at a lot of the English players playing for Spurs here tonight. Jonathan Woodgate, I, I think, had a very good first half. So um, might have done himself a few favours, but... Um, I thought he played really well yeah. first half. He marshalled the back line, but the second half, they've just been overrun. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal's midfield have taken control, and when, you, when the midfield breaks... You're, you're, you're through your midfield and you're straight at your back four it's very difficult for a centre half a slip from Clichy allows Genus to go forward Genus now looking for Darren Bent Genus with a left footer and what a left footer as well gives Spurs with a minute and a quarter to go unbelievable hope we've written them off so many times tonight but now it's Arsenal four Spurs three one of the players Fabio Capello is watching Jermaine Genus has scored I'll just say it's a good job we haven't got a microphone on our sound man because <laughs> he's just lost the sweep it's 4-3 oh, what, a, what, no. a, what a strike I think we can still give it to him don't you I mean, yeah I was only joking <laughs> Look at him. nearest one wins yeah. what oh, a fantastic sweet. strike and, uh, you know for all Arsenal's play, play and pressure and, and possession and skill you know there's still only one goal ahead and <laughs> you have to give Tottenham credit for that a fantastic strike from Genus left foot there are 40 seconds to go, but we may get three minutes of added time. We've had all lots of substitutions. It's now 4-3, and Ibui finds Fabregas on the edge of the penalty area. Will Arsenal reply straight away? Fabregas has won a corner. Ball Arsenal over on the far side. Arsene Wenger's shaking his head. I mean, you know, he doesn't see his team concede three at home many times. But well, from his point of view, at least they've got one in front. Yeah, that's true. And we said before the game about a few defensive frailties and they, they've, they've come to the fore again towards the end of this game and he was allowed to run too far Gene as simple as that they backed off backed off and if you allow a player of his abilities four minutes of extra four time four minutes of added time, added time, added time so. to Arsenal headed away by Huddleston and Spurs you know they'll be revived by that if they can just get some energy going once more Modric Modric Finding Gunter and back again to Modric. And now Modric is suddenly flying forward. Modric slides the ball beautifully into Bentley. Bentley back again to Modric. Bent and Genus in the area. In comes the cross. And Almunia saves underneath his crossbar. 
Back to Bolton, and we've got a goal there now, Ian Brown. Yes, Everton have stolen it in the last minute. Bolton nil, Everton won, Pinar's cross, and there was Fellaini, the man of the moment for Everton, completely unmarked to head the ball in off the base of the post. We're into stoppage time, it's Bolton nil, Everton won. Oh, what a night. We should have more of these in the Premier League. It's full time at Liverpool, Ian Dennis. Liverpool won, Portsmouth nil, a hard fought victory where the league leaders stuck it in the spotlight at the top. Edgy at the end, Gerard's 75th minute penalty won it, 1 0. Thank you, Ian. Oh, a yellow card now to Diaby, Arsenal's first yellow card of the evening, but Toby, even more important here, Liz, there's a dangerous free kick. Very, for very dangerous, and that man Bentley on the ball, we've got great quality. They had 12 men on the pitch just then because Harry Redknapp was actually <laughs> on the pitch trying to get his team to go forward. Now then, Bentley will try and use all of his ability here with a free kick wide on the near side. We're a minute and a half into added time. We're playing four minutes of added time at the Emirates. It's 4-3 to Arsenal. Harry Redknapp looking for something special here. Bentley's going to try and measure this kick. And it goes, and it's been headed behind by one of the Arsenal defenders. I think it was William Gallas. And it's a corner kick to Spurs near side. I think it was Diaby in the end who headed it away, but what a fantastic ball in from Bentley. As a manager, last minute, you want your quality player to put it in the danger area, and he did that. Great header away, corner. Big white charge here from Spurs. The big players from the back have gone forward. In goes a corner kick, well defended by Arsenal, and sumped downfield by Ibui. Nobody there from Arsenal. There's only Gomez, who's only 10 yards or so from the halfway line. We played nearly two and a half minutes of added time and, oh, a mistake here as Spurs give it back almost to Arsenal. But Gomez is still out of his penalty area to take possession. Gunter almost slips. Finds Bentley. There's still time here, unbelievably, for Spurs. Arsenal just need to keep the possession. Song in danger of overrunning it. Huddleston going in against Fabregas. But Fabregas finds Ibui. Ibui into Adebayo. Offside. Out comes Gomez. He wouldn't have counted anyway. Gomez throws quickly downfield to Modric. Modric can't hold on to it. And Gunter volleys the ball downfield. Tottenham need to keep it as we move towards the last minute of added time. Arsenal four, Spurs three. Fabregas this time doesn't wait the pass right to Adebayor. And it's given the possession back to Spurs. It's One up. more thump downfield. It's okay, Arsenal have got 12 on the pitch now. Arsene Wenger, <laughs> Arsene Wenger's popped up on the sidelines. Huddleston for Spurs. Little dink ball for to Modric. Modric with a shot. It's the post. And Lennon's there. Aaron Lennon's there to score and make it 4-4 with 40 seconds to go. It was a wonderful effort from Modric. Almunia was beaten. The ball hit the post. Lennon was waiting to pounce. And Harry Redknapp escapes in the most dramatic of London derbies here. It's now Arsenal 4, Spurs 4. Well, do you know what? I'm not going to say anything. I cannot believe that that's happened. From a football point of view, not from the Arsenal-Tottenham point of view. Ars uh, Tottenham were absolutely dead and buried at 4-2. Their, their heads were down. They didn't react to anything. Arsenal were playing a practice match. And all of a sudden, they get back in the game from Genus, and then they go and get a result. And you have to say, fair play to him. They didn't give up towards the end of the game. Harry Redknapp's just been on the side, cajoling his team, because he felt as if they could get back in the game. And can you believe it? It's 4 all, Unbelievable. I've That's never seen a game like this. And it's Harry Houdini. That's your headline for tomorrow. <laughs> Unbelievable escape from Spurs here. 4-4. And Lennon, one of Harry Redknapp's substitutes, has probably saved the game here for Tottenham. They're still on the bottom, but they're going to get a remarkable draw here. Martin Atkinson still playing on the referee. And Middlesbrough now lead Manchester City 2-0 through Gary O'Neill. Deep into added time at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal, who were leading 4-2, are now drawing 4-4. And as I went for the draw, I think I'd won the sweepstake. That's it, it's over. Well, what an absolutely unbelievable game we've had at the Emirates tonight. We've had to ask, we've had Tottenham ahead in the game with an absolutely world-class goal from David Bentley and probably candidate for goal of the season. And then Arsenal get back into the game and then completely control, take control of the game, they pass the ball around, they've scored some great goals and Tottenham were dead and buried, absolutely dead and buried, but... He's worked his magic. Harry Redknapp has somehow managed to get a point out of this game and the, the Tottenham players are going over to their fans and their fans are absolutely jumping around in the stadium, in the stadium like you can imagine. An unbelievable game.
Well, just finally, Lee, you did say, and particularly when it went to 4-2, that Harry Redknapp was going to find out an awful lot about his players out there, the character, uh, and in the end, they responded for him. Absolutely right, and, uh, you know, you can see Bentley was running right to the end, and in the end, they saw a bit of belief, and they thought they could get something out of the game, and that comes from the manager as well. He's instilled belief in them, and having said that, when it was 4-2, Mike, you couldn't see it happening, but that's part of football. I think Arsene Wenger is the, uh, the one who's going to be uh, saying a few words in the dressing room against his team, conceding of... four goals at home. Fantastic. Thank you, Lee. Well, <laughs> one of the games of the season without question. The final score here, Arsenal 4, Tottenham 4.